What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats. I'm sitting here with Matt Randall, CEO of Spot. Um, you guys have heard me talk about Spot before. Um, it's helped me out, but um, it's it's an insurance company for active people. But we're gonna sit sit back and kind of get to know Matt and th for who Matt is. We're not just gonna sit here and talk about boring insurance stuff all day, but we're also gonna kind of get a dive in and and kind of see where it can be beneficial to other people. So uh, yeah, Matt, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on, John. Yeah, yeah. So where where are you located at right now? Uh, right now, I uh, relocated the family uh, up to Crested Butte for part of the summer. Um, oh, right on. I have a, a two-year-old or almost two-year-old uh, and a wife that uh, is not a big fan of 105 degrees and 95% humidity. So come up here to get some riding in uh, and just kind of get away from some of the heat. No, that's cool, man. Yeah, so... So tell us a little bit about your background, like a little bit about you and who you are. I mean, obviously, you know, you're a CEO of, of a, a new company that, uh, I mean, if you're an active individual, not even just a cyclist, you probably really want to be a part of, but there has to be some vision that came from you as an athlete to create a company like that. I, I don't assume that you're just like sitting in McDonald's one day and be like, Oh, this will be a money maker, you know? So how do you, how yeah. do you get there? Well, I, I, athlete, I would lose, I would use that term very loosely. And that's okay. Um, I always that's say, okay. <laughs> I, I always say it's always a, a good laugh. Uh, I'm never the best and I'm never the worst. I'm somewhere in between and everything from ping pong to cycling to uh, kayaking to uh, whatever else uh, may be out there. I mean, for me, <clears throat> from spot side of it, uh, I started my first company when I was 16 years old, knew I would do that kind of uh, the rest of my life. But, uh, you know, odd thing about myself is I was deaf to the age of about four or five um, and learned to fully speak when I was around 14 or 15. Wow. Um, and I'm highly dyslexic. And so knowing that the only way I was ever going to go to Harvard or one of those schools was going to be going uh, to the gift shop um, to some degree, but, uh, yeah. other than that, uh, wasn't going to go that path in life. And so started first company when I was 16 and knew I'd do that kind of remainder of my life. And so, um, met Maria, my co-founder <clears throat> who is, uh, after some of my last company who's best friends with my wife. Um, and my wife would always say, you need to start up a company with Maria. Um, and the la and the joke always was after my last company, um, I would say, yeah, I love Maria. She's one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life, uh, but she's in insurance. No way I'll ever go into insurance Yeah, uh, because insurance to me is insanely boring. Um, and so it was kind of that idea and she laid out kind of the plan to me after I told my wife I would spend a year and we'd get to travel and stuff like that. And I made it a month into that year. Um, and we started Spot and it was just this idea of is there a better opportunity to serve kind of health insurance across America is a terrible, uh, how it's set up, um, extremely costly, um, things of that sort. And so could we change that? And could we add, create a brand that people actually want to be a part of that actually covers the lifestyle in which they want to lead, um, instead of, you know, building something that is a uh, design for, uh, you know, health insurance companies to become more and more profitable. Could we create something opposite? Uh, that allows you and others to live life to the fullest. And so uh, th that was kind of the idea and it spun out. And to me, it was, if we're going to do something in insurance, let's go as fucking full tilt as possible. Yeah. Um, and what would it look like if Red Bull or GoPro created an insurance company? Yeah. Um, and so th that's kind of the baseline behind it. And we have a lot of future plans, but uh, it's more or less, I want to have, a fun time building this company and uh, being able to cover, uh, you know, people that listen to your podcast and things like that. Uh, their lifestyles is really important to us as a company. No, that's super cool. And to kind of like, kind of like to dive back into a bit of you, <clears throat> the the deaf thing threw me off like completely. So, yeah, you <clears throat> you were born deaf, and then you know, like yeah, to remember. A yeah, not to a degree. What I remember is being in resource classes all okay. the way till I was 14 or 15 and being made fun of, of how I speak uh, okay. because I had a big slur because at that age range, uh, you're not hearing everything fully. And so still to this day, and I talk about it a good amount. Uh, I have nothing to you know hide from on it. But um, still to this day, when I say the word hamburger, it sounds weird to me uh, in yeah. my head because that was like the one word I had such a hard time with my R's. 
um, to yeah. kind of pronunciate. So people say it sounds normal, but still I lean whenever people like even at restaurants, people ask me what I want. And if I do want a hamburger to some degree, um, sometimes I'll just point to it um, just because like, it sounds weird kind of in my head, but that's just a personal thing. No, that's interesting. So like, how did you, cause like, you know, we hear, we hear stories about like people like this all the time, you know, people who pretty much, you know, get made fun of throughout, throughout life. And like, even me as a kid, I remember, so my, my brothers were naturally super smart and we were like pretty close in age. And it wasn't the fact that I wasn't smart. It's I just didn't try. And so eventually that catches up with you though. You know what I mean? But all these teachers knew all of us. And I actually had one teacher say to me, I think it was like in the eighth grade that it was just like, Hey, you know, you're not going to be like your brothers. You're always just going to be a C plus student and that's okay. And like, yeah. she said it with such conviction and like such honesty that like, that's the, and like you, I was that punk in school that was just like, nah, I don't care. But that was the only time that like a teacher, I think said something to me that I was just like, geez, you could have yelled at me and that would have been way better. Like, <laughs> you just told me to get out yeah. of the class or something like that. been way better. So did you have to deal with any of that? Like going up through school? I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of neat to kind of hear like how. You yeah. Know, I mean, I think that to a degree for sure. I mean. I was raised, my father was special forces. Um, and so it was very much kind of military background. Like yeah. you're not going to get any kind of privilege. And let's be honest with ourselves. I, I was born and raised <laughs> much more privileged than 90% of the world. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I was born a male, um, a, a white male in America. Right. Like there's probably yeah. no better privilege <clears throat> across the world. And And so like, I don't look at my situation and say like, you know, feel sorry for me at all. Um, I look at it and say, you know, it shaped me for who I am today. I, I do like funny story. It always sticks with, sticks with you, these things, but you know, I was obviously, I can't even clap on beat. So whenever uh, we're in, you know, some type of growing up some degree and people are clapping, I have to look at the person next to me and clap. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I don't hear tone and music and things like that. Um, and so <clears throat> again, I don't know any difference. Uh, my wife will always laugh at me. I'll be like, who is this artist? And she'll be like, Michael Jackson. I'm like, oh, okay. And uh, she's like, how do you not know any of these things? And so, but I remember a choir teacher uh, growing up said to me, um, and I was in choir because I couldn't be in band, obviously, uh, to be able to uh, play an instrument. But uh, she asked me to lip sync because I was getting everyone off tune. Um, Savage. when I was in, when I was in sixth grade, <laughs> um, you know, so it's one of those things that I'm just kind of like, wait, like, you know, it always you know, makes me laugh about, you know, that, that, that choir teacher had to just like, at that point, that's, that was her break. <clears throat> it was like, if she had to go to a kid, cause you know, teachers like they, I feel like after a while they're putting on a face, but if they have to go to a kid and be like, look, all right, Matt, at this point, I just need you to lip sing. I, it's okay. You'll still pass. It's all good. Yeah, it's, right. it's crazy, man. Exactly. Well, no, that's that's so. super cool that you kind of persevered through that. It's always interesting hearing like a CEO and like you hear these big terms and um, like come from kind of like a background like that. And 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 I also like the fact that you're willing to be like, you know, like, look, like I didn't have it rough. You know, it wasn't like I was, you know, living out of a box and I was deaf and I was, you know, right. surfing for change. And now <clears throat> I'm the CEO of a company. It's it's you know, like I had the opportunity. Um, you also took advantage of it, but I definitely believe that you can also go left and you can go right. And, you know, you definitely took a path where, you know, kind of puts you in the position that you're in today. And so <clears throat> that being said, uh, spot, uh, I've used it. We've talked about it on this podcast, <clears throat> you know, what, like, it almost sounds too good to be true. And so like, I have a feeling when, you know, your, your partner, Maria was like pitching this idea like, were you kind of in the same boat where you're kind of like, can we do this? Like, is this, is this a thing that we can do? Yeah. You know, and not getting into like <clears throat> spot to the degree to where it becomes incre- insanely boring um, to everyone, but really getting to the degree of like spots had multiple different phases to it um, from day one, where we thought the company was going to go and where it is today and where we're going um, and where we're going. Couldn't I could not be more excited. We definitely want to take on uh, the U S healthcare system uh, eventually. But, you know, for me, where we started spot was this idea. The number one thing we hear from people is it sounds too good to be true. Yeah. Totally get that. Um, and, and, 
part of that is for it not to sound too good to be true, we need to raise prices, yeah. right? 25 bucks a month sounds too good to be true. How does $55 a month sound, right? Now we're playing in the US healthcare system, like let's raise prices and let's diversify risk and let's do these different things to where ultimately we want to lower prices to be able to make it more attainable to more and more people, right? Yeah. Now that comes into, it gets really boring, but it comes into loss ratios and all these different things that you have to look at across the business. But for us, really looking at it where we started with Spot was the idea of, you know, Tulsa Tough was this last weekend, right? <clears throat> Could you actually just go on Spot, buy it for four days for Tulsa Tough? right for that for that segment of time well in order to do that you have a cac customer acquisition costs and an ltv on a customer and you have a loss ratio to take into consideration so the whole thing is if you look across kind of those metrics across the business in order to cover you for four days would actually be pretty expensive to yeah. be able to do it <clears throat> right in order to run a business so our whole thought was if we actually create, because people, about 30% of Americans don't have any form of health care and about, you know, 65% of Americans that don't work for Google um, have terrible health healthcare, high deductibles, et cetera. And so for us was to be able to say, if we could get the monthly cost down to 20, 25, $35 a month um, and people just have it on, that lifetime value of that customer is super long. And so we can bring that price down significantly because yeah. they're going to be on for a period of time to where it becomes too good to be true. So ultimately having people like yourself and others and some of our ambassadors and just active individuals out there telling the story, that's what creates the value to where it's not too good to be true. And we can be able to build it because it, it was designed to where it was like, the idea of moments in time, buy it for the next four days, buy it for the next 12 days. But, you know, from a business model, it just doesn't work. So that's where we looked at and said, <clears throat> let's try to drive prices down as low as possible while giving the best opportunity for people. Yeah. And I, you guys, it's, it's nuts because like you said, you guys have been through like several different phases and I've seen spot in <clears throat> like, especially now it's kind of like when you buy a new car, you, you see that car everywhere. Like I've seen spot so many different times in different ways. So like, I think I'm covered, I think it's like up to 20 grand a month. Um, yeah. Or 20 grand an injury, um, no deductible. Um, but I've seen it on like USA cycling. You can get it a part of your <clears throat> membership. And I think it's like 25 K per injury. And it's like just on the bike alone. And like, you guys have it set up to a point where there's like, you know, specific bike racing insurance and specific, like the comment about Tulsa tough, like, have you guys connected also with other sports as well to do, you know, whether it's football, like peewee football, or I, I don't know, something like that, because, you know, it's funny to me, because like, uh, Mark, you know, the, uh, your guy over in marketing, you know, when we were talking about this podcast thing, he's like, yeah, dude, you're going to be covered. Like if you cut your finger off in the kitchen, like, like you're, you're covered. And, and I remember when I had to use it for the first time, I was like, crap, this is going to turn me off. But it's, it's a small enough bill that I'm just going to try it and see what happens. And honestly, it was, and I don't know if it's because you guys are a new company or, or if it just is, is what it is, you know, it's like, it was super fast. I uh, got a check and everything. So how, how have you guys partnered with these brands to go, Hey, yeah, we, we're, we're going to cover, we're going to offer racers, you know, $30 for a day for Tulsa tough or whatever to cover um, the bike racers for that, for that weekend. Yeah. I mean, it's so there's a couple different things. So <clears throat> we look at multiple different verticals. I would say yeah. verticals as in kind of, so we have two different sides of the business. We have a direct to consumer. You can go on getspot.com. It's 25, 35 bucks a month, depending on what state you live in due to regulation. And we cover you 24 seven. You can, we cover, you know, if you are hanging Christmas lights and you fall off a ladder, if you get in a car accident, if you're climbing up your stairs and whatever happens, any injury, we cover your medical bills related to that up to 20,000 per injury. So if you get injured four times a year, we'll cover 80,000 in medical bills up to that. Now we will be adding more and more products to that. And you can, you'll be able to go more than 20,000 to 50,000, hundred thousand and things of that sort eventually. Yeah. Um, now, the partnership side, that's where we work with ski resorts. So 
you know, um, when you're buying a lift ticket or a season pass, you can add spot in for that day or for that season pass when you're skiing there. USA Cycling is a perfect example. Um, it's going live in the reg flow in the next couple of weeks. Um, and they've been an amazing partner to be able to work with the new team over there. Uh, I could not have more respect for um, in the way and kind of they're looking to grow the sport. And, and that's important to us. We Our whole baseline is to grow and encourage people to get out and live more. Um, yeah. Now, live more for you may be different than me, right? Like live more for you, you know, or people have told stuff this last weekend or gravel racing or things like that. We want to encourage people to just go a little bit more, like, you know, hit that gap if they want to try it, right? Knowing yeah. that, that we have spot behind it. Now, you're not going to see me in any crit race anytime soon. <laughs> uh, like it'd probably be pretty safe because everyone would be far um, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, in front of me. I'd be riding solo. Um, but in those worlds to us is like what does encourage people to go a little bit more and so that is um important to us to where usc cycling is really unique we don't really know how to price this this is just me being as transparent as possible uh we know it's a unique offering um and it's i think it's 40 bucks a year and we cover you anytime you get injured on a bicycle uh, that That's could insane. be commuting back and forth to work. It could be anything. And you have to be a USA Cycling member for that. Um, but it's not, but and, it's not in a USA Cycling event, right? Because you have you have some where it's like, like with I think with Obra, right? And correct me if I'm wrong. With Obra, you have to be racing. And if you're racing with Obra and you get injured, then you're covered. But if you're out training, you're not covered then because it's just a different insurance, I, right? I, I don't. I no, believe no. Obra is similar to USA Cycling to where it's anytime you're on a bicycle. I could be wrong on that, I believe. Okay. Now, when you're registering for any of the USA Cycling events, anything like that through Bike Reg, um, yeah. any event on Bike Reg, you can you can reg you can buy it for like five or six bucks for that day of the event. That's insane um, to be able to have it. And what's the coverage um, on that? Is it the same, same thing? It's twenty or twenty five thousand um, in medical bills $5. related to it. Five, yeah, five bucks. And then if I break my collarbone, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Like I don't yeah, have you're to stress. Good. You're covered. That's insane. Now, if you have health insurance and you have a, so people always like to think it's always funny to me, um, uh, to some degree that people like to think that like a CEO of a company has amazing health care and makes a ton of money and all these yeah. different things. And the thing is that's perceived, that's perception, right? But I get yeah. perceptions, reality, and a lot of things. I personally, and this just, you know, as transparent as possible, spot pays $1,300 a month for my health insurance for me, my wife, and my daughter. I have a $14,000 deductible. So in order for my health insurance to kick in in America, I have to, spot and myself have to pay $29,000 before my health insurance kicks in, which is fucking insane to me, like it's absolutely wild. ludicrous. And so to us is even if you have health insurance, a lot of times, like it's the number one reason for bankruptcies in America. If you have health insurance, you know, spot pays that entire gap um, for you. If you don't have health insurance, that's when it kicks in 20,000 uh, per injury uh, to be able to cover you um, at, at those moments in time. But yeah, if it's, you know, from cycling to all these things, our biggest thing is, is <clears throat> spot wants to show up in the times in which you need it most. Mm. Um, th that's most important to us. So if it's a registration of an event, things of this sort, um, then, I mean, it's important to us, no matter if that's across Pop Warner football, if that's USA Youth Soccer, if that's you know, a, a ski resort, cycling race, whatever that is, we want to be able to show up uh, to be able to say like, hey, there is a new alternative out here uh, that's extremely affordable. Um, and we want you guys to know that like, hey, we stand with you. Uh, because a lot of times is like, you know, we don't know when something's going to happen to us. That's like something that's incredibly important. We have some incredible ambassadors uh, on the company um, that we get to work with from, you know, cyclists from, um, Aisha and Justin Williams to, you know, snowboard snowboarders uh, like Travis Rice and skiers like Julian Carr, which I have a amazing story about Julian. Julian uh, is an incredible ambassador for us to, you know, surfers uh, to rock climbers, et cetera. And so really kind of encouraging people to get out. And uh, Julian's uh, always makes me laugh. Uh, incredible athletes. He's known for jumping off 100, 200 foot cliffs into powder. Um, yeah. That's kind of what he's known for. Uh, he filed a claim uh, a couple months ago uh, on the company 
And we were like, oh man, what happened? Because if anything happens to him, it's probably dire to say the least. Um, And he was walking his dog and the leash wrapped around his fingers and broke two of his fingers. Um, And uh, so this guy that (laughs) does these epic uh, things that we look at and and admire so much uh, files a claim for uh, walking his dog. And so these are things that we want people to know. It's not just about being in a race or doing things like this it's actually about lot just living your life and not knowing when something may happen no that's and that and that's and that's really cool because like i like how i got connected with you guys and uh, i think i've said it before but just so that people know is you know i lost health insurance and then me not being an adult and traveling europe and exploring and i was covered with usa cycling so i was traveling with them um I didn't stress about it, but you have 45 days. There's like this 45 day window that nobody tells you about yeah. where you need to get in. Like the moment your insurance lapses, you have 45 days to re up um, with no waiting period. Um, but I did, I waited too long. And then I called on like November, I don't know, 25th. And the only reason why I remember this, is cause there's an accident coming. And so on November 25th, I called, got health insurance and like, yeah, the soonest you can get it is January 1st. And I was like, Oh crap. Well, I have, you know, a Madison here um, on the 6th, you know, I have to go to Detroit and race. And then I'm going to Australia to race for two weeks after that. Like, I I just don't know, I guess, what am I going to do? And I remember the insurance guy saying it over the phone. Just don't crash. Like, if you're a good bike racer, just don't (laughs) crash. First race, broke my collarbone. um, And I'm out, I'm down and out. And uh, I got super lucky with USA cycling had an insurance, but there was a $5,000 deductible, which I'm Mm -hmm. still paying on today. And I broke my collarbone December 6, 2019. I had surgery January 12th, 2020, um, or no, January 20 or December 13th, 2019. I got the bill January 12th. Um, Mm -hmm. and it was for five grand. Um, and so, and I'm still paying that today in $200 payments every month. And, it's like if you yeah. would have had spot, it would have been completely covered. Like and at that time, six bucks right. or whatever it was, you know, it would have made yeah. a huge difference. And I don't know if it's just like now I'm looking at it and going, you know, me being 28 and having experienced it, you know, whereas like 23 year old me was like, I'll save six bucks. You know, that's a coffee. Yeah, or whatever. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I'd rather the coffee than uh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why I'm stressing this on this podcast and really why I wanted to talk about it because I almost had to quit. I almost had to quit cycling and uh, change careers. I mean, a lot of us guys, especially pro cyclists, you know, we don't have the fortune of getting paid good money. You know, it comes from prize yeah. money or it comes from brands and whatever else. But, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we chase and to do what we love. And, and so it's cool to see a company like Spot doing what they're doing. And so that being said, I really want to ask and I don't know how deep you can get in, you know, one of my last questions for you is, where do you see spot going? I know you want to, you, you've kind of hinted at it and you're like, yeah, we want to take over the world. Yeah. All, all CEOs want to take over the world. You know, they want their company to be the best company ever, but I, I, I'm really inspired by spot. I really like spot. What, what do you honestly see like two years, five years, 10 years or whatever down the road for spot and for us athletes and for us people, I guess, more or less. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. We've learned a lot in building this company. I, th- I think what's important for us is to be aggressive and where we see opportunity, but at the same time, try to be humble to better understand, you know, people like yourself and others out there, what's actually needed, not necessarily what we want to build um, in building companies. Um, you know, I, I think part of that is, you uh, you know, from an ego point of view, um, looking at it and saying like, you know, let's go build this, but ultimately looking at the market and saying what needs to be built. And so where we look at it, you know, for me, uh, not getting too far into the weeds, but ultimately in America, there's two opportunities. Um, You either have healthcare um, or you don't. And it's created this have and have nots, right? Um, If you're an individual and you just want to have comprehensive health care with a five or six thousand dollar deductible as an individual, depending on your state, you're probably spending five to six hundred dollars a month on that. Well, 
there's not a lot of people that can afford five or six hundred dollars a month, right? And so what yeah. we do, we end up not getting coverage. We end up opting for catastrophic coverage to some degree, and there's no option that sits in the middle alternative. And what we've seen with Spot, um, that's been incredible, is people using it as that alternative to a degree, kind of like what you talked about, like this sense of like, hey, I, I'm not scared of cancer. I'm not scared of these different things kind of in my life. Um, I'm actually, this is where my fear lies. If something were to happen to me on my bike or something were to happen to me kind of with an injury related. And so ultimately we want to create that alternative. We want to create an opportunity to where you have choice. You can come in and you can pay for the coverage you want. You can pick injury, you can pick this and you can pick that. Um, and you can kind of customize and create what that alternative looks like um, for yourself. And so now that will be a, Spot will look a little bit different. Spot will be about, you know, um, young, healthy individuals, like, you know, not having to go, how health insurance works is they spread the risk out. So everyone's paying for kind of each other um, to a degree. And so when looking at this and giving someone a young, healthy individual that alternative, it's really important. But ultimately our customers like yourself and others are gonna tell us what you guys want. Um, and we do a lot of qual and quant studies to better understand that. But more than anything outside of myself and vision and things like that, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I can sit as a spokesperson to a degree, but we have an incredible team that's working on this day in day out that is dedicated athletes, dedicated, you know, uh, Mark that you talked about, Mark is, you know, one of the most charismatic individuals I've ever met that could He's not right. be more on fire. Yeah, yeah, for sure about spots and the way and like we could do a whole podcast, just stories on Mark yeah. um, about this whole thing. But in that is it's just really important to us to look at and say, yes, we want to go take on the U.S. healthcare system. But how we do that is a day by day process and creating unique products for guys like yourself and others. Um, to where you feel like you're fully covered. Um, and so th that's where I see the future of spot going. Um, and, you know, that's, uh, we couldn't be more excited about what the end of this year going into 2022 looks like. Uh, but that is, you know, that's where we see it going. And it should be a hell of a lot of fun to bring to market. No, that's sick. And it sounds, it sounds awesome. Uh, but just to kind of, kind of, kind of segue a little bit. Um, last question. If you could have a cup of coffee with one individual, <clears throat> who would this individual be? Why? And they could be dead or alive. And how would you take your coffee? Um, so how I would take my coffee, I'll start with there first, is uh, always Americano Black. Um, right. My dad uh, always drank black coffee from 7-Eleven uh, growing up. And so started <laughs> that when I was probably eight years old, wanting to be like him. The uh, the person I would take it with uh, would be Richard Branson, okay. um, by far. Um, and the reason is, is he's highly dyslexic, built incredible companies. Um, and he has a philosophy that says he doesn't necessarily care about his customer. He cares about his employee. And, as a, and if his employee is happy, his customer is going to be happy um, wow. at the end of the day. And and those are, you know, guys like himself that kind of uh, push against uh different things he always jokes around about going not going to college and all these different things um and being dyslexic and building companies and so that's who i would love to have a coffee with i never met him hope to meet him one day uh, but even if i don't uh there's uh, certain people in our life that have been a um you know that we uh not necessarily aspire to but we look up to uh to some degree and he's definitely uh that individual for myself no that's super powerful and uh and yeah, man, like I said, I, I really appreciate your time. I think, um, I, unfortunately, I th still think in this podcast, it still sounds too good to be true, um, yeah. which which is a bummer. But uh, hopefully people will will try it out for themselves and find out that it's not too good to be true. You know, like even me, I'm still like, man, like, you know, because I've just had so much bad luck with the health system. And, and I, a lot of people have, you know, and uh, in, in theory, I'm I'm actually lucky in comparison to some others. So um guys if you haven't already please go check out um spot you can check out their social medias they even have you know funny memes that they post from time to time as well as uh some other things on their social media and then um but yeah you can you can just go check it out there'll be a link in the description below but other than that matt thank you so much for uh hopping on the podcast and uh we'll see you next time hopefully uh at a bike race or something cool yeah well you'll see me on the sideline rooting you guys on uh, <laughs> right but on. uh 
Well, thanks for the time. And, uh, you know, more than anything, let us know how we can always support uh, you guys in the community. Sweet. Cheers, man.